Wednesday, May 11th, 2022, and we are live. Welcome to the African History Network show right here on the AM Superstation of Future Radio. Hope everybody's doing well today. The call number is 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600 is the call number if you have a question or comment. All right, so I posted an article on our Facebook fan page, the African History Network today, that got uh, got over twenty five hundred likes and a lot of comments. Uh, and it re it's regarding uh, former Black Panther member Sundiata Okoli, who has dementia, and he was convicted of the nineteen seventy three killing of New Jersey State Trooper Warner Forrester. He's, he was convicted in 1974. He's been in prison uh, 49 years, and we found out today he's going to be paroled. So we're going to talk some uh, about this. Uh, there was a the article I posted was from BlackAmericaWeb.com. BlackAmericaWeb BlackAmericaWeb.com has an article dealing with this. Also, uh, New York Times has an article as well. So we're going to talk about this now. If you remember, um, it was the car was pulled over by a state trooper because the state trooper said they had a broken tail light in the car. Was uh, Sundiata Okoli, uh, also uh, Joanne Chesimard, uh better known as Asada Shakur, and James Costin. Okay, and they were members of the Black Liberation Army. So we're going to talk about this, and I'm going to play uh, an interview with Asada Shakur's uh, longtime attorney, Lennox Hines, from uh, this interview is from 2013, if I remember correctly, 2013 from Democracy Now. And he talks about the case against her. He talks about the... Um, he talks about, about the Black Panthers and the Black Liberation Army being targeted by J. Edgar Hoover and COINTELPRO, the counterintelligence program. So we'll talk about that on today's show. Then a couple of weeks ago, you know, we talked about uh, in Florida, the the uh, district lines being redrawn in Florida, Florida congressional maps being redrawn that would uh help to break up two black districts district five and district 10 okay and district 10 is held by val demings representative val demings well uh there was a ruling that there, there was a uh information that came out from a florida circuit court today and the judge signals that the new congressional map is unconstitutional for diminishing black representation so that ruling is coming any day now so this is good news okay this is definitely good, good news and we'll talk about this on today's show. we'll talk about this on today's show all right uh desantis appointed judge signals florida's congressional map is unconstitutional for diminishing black representation for diminishing black representation so we'll discuss that as well. Now, on the African History Network show, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world. Because right now, it's correct wrong behavior. What you do for yourself, what you do to yourself, and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with is based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you have been have, what you've been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based upon everything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. All right, uh, sign up for our email newsletter, text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, the 22828. The sign up for our email newsletter, text the word Kemet, K-E-M-E-T, to 22828. The sign up for our email newsletter. Okay, uh, I want to go to this first story here. And let's see. Okay, this is acting up on me. Uh, I want to go to this first story here dealing with uh, uh, Sundiata Okoli who's going to be paroled from prison after 49 years in prison. So black America web has a good article on this, uh, former black Panther party. Oh, oh let's see. Let's pull this, pull this up here. Former black Panther, Sundiata Okoli granted, uh, parole 
after at a, at age 85 he's 85 years old okay granted parole at age 85 a coley must be released because the statutory standards for granting parole have been met without regard to extraneous factors like sup like sympathy or passion or public opinion read the court's decision okay so this uh information came down today and let me close some ads i hate this is why i don't use articles from black america web i hate all these ads um after nearly yeah, here's a picture of them here also okay after nearly uh 50 years in prison sundiata okoli is finally uh going home to spend his remaining days with his daughter and loved ones so he has dementia he's not a threat to anybody he's been rehabilitated uh, and he, he should have been let out of prison years ago the new jersey supreme court released its decision on tuesday um tuesday may 10th tuesday morning granting a coley's bid for freedom now it's expected within the next 10 days he's going to be released from from prison okay uh, times also has uh, a, a good article on this um the the title is uh, a little different and i'm gonna let you see the title from the new york times their title is black nationalist convicted in 73 killing a new uh new jersey trooper wins parole so <coughs> it was just like excuse me it was they just uh you know called him a black nationalist things like this they didn't say he's been rehabilitated or anything like that right so there it was somebody white that wrote this article number one for new york times they have some good information in it now it is true that oftentimes the writer of the article does not choose the title that could be the editor okay that is true understanding journalism i don't know who chose this title but when you look at the title from the new york times okay the article from the new york times it's much different than the article from black america web this is the article from the new york times may 10th 2022 black nationalists convicted in 73 killing a new jersey trooper nj trooper wins parole now you compare this to the article from black america web.com the new article from black america web once again okay i gotta close that out they have too many ads popping up um the article from um blackamericaweb.com once again is the name of that article former black panther sunday Otto coley granted parole at 85. okay so if we look here at the one from um new york times because the one from black america web they keep having these ads that pop up and the music's blaring all this stuff i can't deal with that uh new jersey supreme court granted parole on tuesday to sunday Otto coley an 85 year old former member of the black liberation army who was convicted in 19 in the 1973 shooting death of a state trooper warner forster warner forster in one of the state's most infamous cases now supporters of mr coley who had been repeatedly denied parole during his 49 years in prison had pressed for his release for years in a three to two decision overturning a parole board ruling the court concluded that the board had not proved that Sundiata Okoli was likely to commit another crime if released the the in a three to two decision overturning a parole board ruling the court concluded that the board had not proved that Sundiata Okoli was likely to commit another crime if released. Now, the Supreme Court noted that Sundiata Okoli has dementia, who has dementia, planned to live with his daughter and grandchildren who are residents of Brooklyn. Another picture of him, okay? Been in prison 49 years quote we conclude that the board's finding that there is a substantial likelihood that a coley will commit a crime if paroled is not supported by substantial 
credible evidence in the record, said Justice Barry T. Albin, uh, who wrote this for the majority uh, decision, majority ruling. Now, uh, quote, no member of the court disputes that a Coley committed a horrific crime, he added. Quote, however, however despised the Coley may be in the eyes of many because of the notoriety of his crime, he too is entitled to the protection of the law. He too is entitled to the protection of the law and to the fair and impartial administration of justice. And here's also a picture of uh, New Jersey State Trooper Warner Forster. Now, we're going to continue this on the other side of the break. Uh, Governor Philip D. Murphy, who's a Democrat. Uh, blast, blasted this decision. He didn't like it. Also, remember, Asada Shakur was in this car that was pulled over by the New, Jer New, Jer New Jersey State Trooper as well. We're going to talk about that also. On the other side of the break, listen to the African History Network show. I'm Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stand by. Back from breaking four minutes. Stand by. How's everybody doing? Share this broadcasting and social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in. You can register for the online class I teach on Saturdays and Sundays. Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa. Understand the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Class number three is this Saturday, May 14th. Stand by. Back from break at three minutes. Share this broadcasting on social media platforms. Uh, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App. Also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. Back from breaking one minute. Stand by. Back from breaking one minute. Stand by. The network show we do with current events in history and politics, education, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship, relationships, love, sex, health issues, and much, much more. Unfortunately, many people confuse what racism is. Racism is a power structure. It was laws and policies that put us in this predicament. It's going to be laws and policies that take us out. So when you control the radius of a man or woman's thoughts, you can control the compass of his or her actions because the mind can't do or teach what it doesn't know. We have it all on 910 AM Superstation. Welcome back to the After History Network show right here on the the Superstation, the Future Radio. Okay, call in numbers 313-778-7600, 313-778-7600. 
is to call the number if you have a question or comment. Also, if you'd like this type of information, you can support the African History Network. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App. Also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. And we have the information on the homepage of our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. So let's keep doing the research, stay on the air, keep broadcasting, et cetera. Okay, I want to go back to back to the story. And I just sent you a clip uh, I was trying to find, Shakita. So sorry about that. Just sent you a clip here from CBS News. I want to go to that clip here in just a minute. Okay, so we were talking about uh, Sundiata Okoli, former Black Panther uh, member who was convicted in 1974 of the 1973 uh, killing of Warner Forster, a uh, New Jersey State Trooper. Now, Sundiata Okoli has dementia. He's 85 years old. He's been in prison uh, 49 years. I want to go back to the article here from the New York Times. So uh, Governor Phil Murphy, who's a Democrat, immediately uh, criticized the decision to release Sundiata Okoli, as did the state's acting attorney general, Matthew Platkin, P-L-A-T-K-I-N. Now, a law passed more than 20 years after Sundiata Okoli's conviction requires anyone convicted of killing an on-duty police officer, law enforcement officer, to serve life uh, a lifetime in prison, okay? A lifetime in prison. Now, Governor Murphy, in a statement today, said, I profoundly wish this law had been in place when Sunday Ada Coley was sentenced in 1974. Governor Murphy said in a statement, our men and women in uniform are heroes, and anyone who would take the life of an officer on duty should remain behind bars until the end of their life. Now, it's not completely clear that Sundiata Okoli killed Officer Warner also, okay? That's something else. Now, Sophia Elijah, a civil rights attorney who advocated for Sundiata Okoli, praised the Supreme Court for, quote, correcting the parole board's improper application of the law. Correcting the parole board's improper application of the law. Sophia, uh, Sophia Elijah said in a statement, we appreciate and thank his thousands of supporters from the attorneys, individuals, community organizations to those who submitted amicus briefs on his behalf to champion his freedom freedom that is rightfully his we strongly hope that uh mr okoli's freedom will bring attention to the thousands of elders like him trapped in the new jersey prison system the thousands of elders like him trapped in the jersey prison system now bruce afrin a lawyer who has represented uh, Sundiata Coley since 2011 said he expected his client to be released within, uh, within a week to 10 days. He said after 40 years of being a model inmate, the time, the time for vengeance is over. After 40 years of being a model inmate, the time for vengeance is over. Uh, and time for a humane approach has come. Now, on May 2nd, 1973, Sunday Otto Coley was driving a white Pontiac on a New Jersey turnpike with two fellow members of the, now, New York Times calls them Radical Black Liberation Army, okay? James Costin, C-O-S-T-A-N, Joanne D. Chesimar, better known as Asada Shakur, all right. They were all in the car with Cindy out of A New Jersey state trooper, James Harper, stopped the car at about 1 a.m., having observed a broken taillight, according to the police. Trooper Warner, Stafor, trooper Warner, uh, Warner Forrester, a married 34-year-old officer who lived 
in Old Bridge, New Jersey, arrived on the scene as backup. Joanne Chesimard, Asada Shakur, who at the time was a leading figure in the Black Liberation Army, according now according to this report here. Now I'm gonna let you hear from her attorney, Lennox Hines, in just a minute. According to what white people are saying, uh, <laughs> she she fired the first shot, according to them, according to trial testimony, starting a shootout among her trooper, trooper Harper and uh, Coast, uh, uh, James Coston, C O S T A N. During the melee, uh, Sundiata Coley attempted to grab Trooper Werner Forrester's gun, according to the decision, according to the, the his conviction, according to the ruling in, in the court, 1974. Quote In the course of that physical struggle, Sundiata Coley claims that Trooper Harper fired at him raising the top of his head and causing him to black out. Okay. He says that trooper Harper fired at him, grazing the top of his head and causing him to black out quote, according to Cindy out of when he regained consciousness, trooper Warner Forrester's body was laying on the ground nearby Cindy out nearby and Cindy out of fled with James Costin and Joanne Chesimard, Asada Shakur, both severely wounded, end quote. Now, James Costin eventually, eventually died of his injuries. A jury convicted, I don't know how many black people on this jury. I, I don't, I'm just saying, okay, I don't. A jury convicted Cindy Coley in 1974, and he was sentenced to life in prison. He first became eligible for parole in 1993, at a parole hearing in June 2016, Sundiata Okoli maintained that he was unsure. He maintained he was unsure who had fired who had fired uh, the bullet that killed Trooper Warner Forrester, because he said he blacked out after a bullet grazed the top of his head. So at a parole hearing in June 2016, he was convicted in 1974. Sundiata Coley maintained that he was unsure who had fired the bullet that killed Trooper Warner Forrester, but he accepted responsibility and expressed his deepest remorse and sincere apology to Trooper Forrester's family. No one can change the past, he said, but anyone can pay the penalty to uh change themselves but anyone can pay the penalty to change themselves and that's what i've been working on these many years now he said i'm responsible uh, according to the supreme court decision okay supreme court city of new jersey quote i deeply regret his murder my role in it end quote now i want to go to this clip here we're going to clip uh this clip from cbs news shakita this is uh from may 10th 2022 CBS News talking about the release of Cindy out of Cole. Let's go to this clip, please. The reversal. New Jersey Supreme Court grants parole to a man who killed a state trooper in a notorious case from half a century ago. CBS 2's Ali Bauman with the emotional reaction on both sides. In 1973, Sundiata Akali was arrested and later sentenced to life in prison for the shooting death of New Jersey State Trooper Werner Forster co-defendant Joanne Chesimard escaped from prison and remains a fugitive. Now, after serving 49 years behind bars, Akali has been granted parole. When I talked to Sundiata today and told him that the court had ruled in his favor, I must have repeated it at least six times. It was surreal for him. In its decision Tuesday, the New Jersey Supreme Court wrote in part, no member of the court disputes that Akali committed a horrific crime. The issue, however, is whether Akali, after nearly five decades of imprisonment, has satisfied the statutory demands that govern his parole eligibility. And in New Jersey, a life sentence means that you're eligible for parole after serving 25 years. Governor Phil Murphy criticized the court's decision, saying in part, anyone who would take the life of an officer on duty should remain behind bars until the end of their life. This is probably one of the most notorious crimes in the state of New Jersey's history. Wayne Blanchard is president of the State Troopers Fraternal Association. The memory 
of Trooper Forrester, uh, his dignity, the family's dignity, I, I believe, has been trampled on by the court. Attorneys for Akali say at 85 years old, he suffers from dementia and other health issues. This past weekend, Akali's family made a plea for his release. He has been a model prisoner. He has done the things that are required of him. And he's remained a positive and influential person. His attorney says once Akali is officially released, he plans to live in New York City with his daughter, nieces, and grandchildren. Ali Bauman, CBS 2 News. All right, Ali Bauman, yeah, great reporting for CBS uh, News. We're going to continue this on the other side of the break. Now, when we come back, I want you to hear an interview that Lennox Hines, longtime attorney for Asada Shakur, did in 2013, where he breaks down the case and how it was, he, as he says, basically were trumped up charges against Asada Shakur. Listen to the African History Network show. I'm Michael M. Hotep. We'll be back in a few minutes. Stand by. Bathroom break in four minutes. Stand by. How's everybody doing? Share this broadcast on social media platforms. Invite your friends to tune in also. Back from break in three minutes. All right, who still needs to register for the uh, online history class I teach on Saturdays? Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa. Understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. We got the information here. All right, we got the information right here around the home page of our website. Stand by bathroom break in two minutes. Back from breaking one minute. Stand by. Nine ten, the superstation, Detroit's only African American talk radio. Welcome back to the African History Network show. All right, uh, right before the break, we were talking about um, Sundiata Okoli, um, who's going to be paroled from prison after forty nine years. Okay, after forty nine years uh, in prison, and he was uh, convicted for the 1973 murder of uh, New Jersey State Trooper Warner Forrester. Now, uh, I want to go to this clip here from, um, this is from uh, Democracy Now! Democracy Now! This is from 2013. And you have, let me see if I close this up. Okay. Uh, Lennox Hines, who's a longtime attorney for uh, a 
Asada Shakur. We know Asada Shakur was liberated out of prison. And last we heard, she's in Cuba. Okay, I don't know if she's still there, but last we heard, she was in Cuba. There was this good article from news1.com from May 5th, 2013, by uh, Kirsten West Savali. Kirsten West Savali. Angela Davis, the FBI targeting Asada Shakur reflects very logic of terrorism. And it talks about the interview on Democracy Now that Angela Davis and uh, Asada Shakur did, uh, uh, Angela Davis and Lennox Hines did with Amy Goodman and Juan Gonzalez. Um, and it talks about here, if I scroll down, okay, Davis was joined by Lennox Hines, Asada Shakur's attorney since 1973. Let's pull this up here. All right, right here. Angela Davis was joined by Lennox Hines, Asada Shakur's attorney since 1973 and professor of criminal justice at Rutgers University, who also said the act is politically motivated. This is a political act pushed by the state of New Jersey by some, by some members of Congress from Miami and with the intent of putting pressure on the Cuban government and to inflame public opinion, Lennox Hines says, there's no way to appeal someone being put on the terrorist list. Okay, so this was, um, she was put on the uh, terrorist list. There was a uh, $2 million award for, for her capture, if I remember correctly. So it goes on to say, Asada Shakur, formerly Joanne Chesimard, was a member of the Black Panther Party and Black Liberation Army and the first woman placed on the most wanted list, uh, Asada Shakur, the godmother of slain hip hop artist, poet, actor, and activist Tupac Shakur, is only the second person from inside the United States to be placed on the list. In an unexpected move, the state of New Jersey announced it was adding. Uh, Roll the nugget, casino .com. In an unexpected move, the state of New Jersey was announcing they were adding. A uh, additional one million dollars to the uh, to the bounty or to the reward. Uh, so, in an unexpected move, the state of New Jersey uh, announced it was adding one million dollars to the FBI's one million dollar reward for her capture. Though the politically accepted version of events vilifies Asada Shakur, they in this article uh, for News1.com, Kirsten West of Valley, she goes. Through and, and lays out some facts here. So, Asana Shakur was falsely convicted of having killed an officer on May 2nd, 1973, while driving uh, on the New Jersey Turnpike. Asana Shakur, Saeed Shakur, and Cindy Alakoli were stopped by state troopers allegedly for having a quote unquote faulty taillight. A shootout ensued. One trooper killed Zaid Shakur, okay, uh, James Costin. And another trooper, Warner Forrester, ended up dead. Asada Shakur was charged with both murders, despite the fact that the other trooper, James Harper, admitted that he killed Zaid Shakur. Now, Asada Shakur had been following police instructions, standing with her hands in the air. When she was when she was shot by Trooper Harper more than once, including a bullet to the back including a bullet to the back. Trooper Harper, according to this article here, Trooper Harper lied and said he had seen Asada Shakur reach for a gun, a claim he, let, he later recanted. A claim he later recanted. He also claimed that Asada Shakur had been in a firing position, something a surgeon who examined her said was, anatomically impossible quote unquote anatomically impossible the same surgeon said it was anatomically necessary for her arms to have been raised for her to receive the bullet wound she did my understanding she was shot underneath the armpits okay tests done by the police found that asada shakur had not fired a gun and no physical or medical evidence was presented by the prosecution to back up their claim that she had fired a gun at Trooper Harper. Now, while she was in, um, let's see here, while she was in trial proceedings, 
the state attempted to pan. Now, check this out. The state attempted to pin six other serious crimes on Asada Shakur, alleging she had carried out bank robberies, kidnappings, and attempted killings. She was acquitted three times. Two were two uh, charges were dismissed, and one resulted in a hung jury. She was acquitted three times. Two were dismissed. Two charges were dismissed, and one resulted in a hung jury. Asada Shakur was put on trial in a county where, because of pretrial publicity, 70% of people thought she was guilty and she was judged by an all white jury. She was judged by an all white jury without any physical evidence, without any physical evidence to present. The prosecution, hold on, let me see. This is up. Hold on. Oh, okay. Just a second here. Okay, without any physical evidence to present, the prosecution had to rely on false statements and innuendo aimed at playing on the prejudices of the jury against black people, political radicals, and black revolutionaries in particular. Finally, after years behind bars, the state secured her conviction for the turnpike shooting. Okay, in 1979, Asada Shakur escaped from jail and fled to Cuba where she received political asylum and has lived ever since. Uh, I want to go to this clip here. This is an interview from 2013 at Democracy Now! Deal with Lennox Hines, uh, Sada Shakur's longtime attorney. Let's go to this clip, please, Shakita. Uh, that should be clip number one. Shakur in the film Eyes on the Rainbow, the Asada Shakur documentary, Lennox Hines, um, you went to court to change the prison conditions that um, Asada Shakur was in after she was arrested. Describe what happened to her after she was arrested. I mean, she was near death. She was near death. Um, she was chained to a hospital bed after she recovered. She was placed in an all-male prison. Um, she was under 24 hour surveillance by male prison guards who were watching and uh, monitoring her very personal um, uh, um, uh, needs uh, during that time period. Um, she, um, we went into federal court and challenged the conditions of her confinement um, where she was kept in solitary confinement for two years. Um, we won that case, and the, uh, that is the Middlesex County uh, Correctional Department were forced to place her in a woman's uh, facility. Um, but that was a horrible situation amounting to torture. Your case went to the Supreme Court, how you were treated um, in the court? Well, um, there's the illusion uh, you know, I, I wrote a book called Illusions of Justice. There is the illusion that we have uh, uh, justice in the United States. I made the mistake of thinking that lawyers enjoy the First Amendment rights. And I called a press conference and I criticized the trial judge at the trial and said that um, the case was a legalized lynching. Before you know it, I was facing disbarment. Um, they attempted to disbar me by, by bringing uh, charges against me. And they asked me to come and explain myself. I refused. I sued the judge. I sued the prosecutor. And I sued all of the members of the ethics committee, forced them to come to my office. I took their depositions. And the case went all the way up to the United States Supreme Court. The United States Supreme Court said, well... Um, Heinz could not have understood the seriousness of the charges. Uh, otherwise, he would not have made that sort of statement. They sent the case back to New Jersey. Um, the New Jersey Supreme Court agreed and tossed it out. You're still a lawyer today. And I'm you, still a lawyer and you today. represented uh, South African President Nelson Mandela. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the the trial itself, the only trial uh, for which 
uh, Asad Shakur has ever been convicted uh, in New Jersey. You write in the preface, it had been and is my view that it was the racism in Middlesex County fueled by biased, inflammatory publicity in the local press before and throughout the trial, fanned by the documented government lawlessness that made it possible for the, all, for the white jury to convict Asada on the uncorroborated, contradictory, and generally incredible testimony of Trooper Harper, the only only other witness to the events on the turnpike. There was one other state trooper, Harper, who uh, who survived uh, the uh, the confrontation and who was the main witness uh, against the side. Yeah, but Harper um, ran. Okay, pause right there. We're going to continue this other side of the break. Uh, Lennox Hines, Attorney Lennox Hines, is going to break down this case. Listen to the After History Network show right here on 9 10 a.m. Superstation Future Radio or Michael M. Hotel. We'll be back in a few minutes. Back from break in four minutes. Stand by. Stand by, everybody. Back from breaking four minutes. Back from breaking two minutes. Half from breaking one minute. Stand by. Back from breaking one minute. Welcome back to the African History Network show right here on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, Future Radio. Okay, hey, if you'd like this type of information, uh, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign, the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me forward slash the AHN show. We're going back to that clip in just a second here from Democracy Now, Shakita. Uh, we have the information on the homepage of our website. Uh, when you go to our Cash App account, it says Michael. And it shows my picture there. Our cash app tag is dollar sign the AHN show S H O W. These other ones are fake African History Network cash app accounts. So I was in contact with uh, Cash App today. They, they still have investigation going to shut down these uh, fake cash app accounts. We have our link here and the yellow donate button. You can register for the online classes that I teach. Uh, we have them at our website also. And the documentary Out of Darkness. We have uh, that in as well from Amadeus Christ. 
uh, the new documentary feature, featuring Professor Jane Small, Professor Kabahai Wata Kamene, Tony Browder, uh, David Banner, and others. You get one of my lectures free when you order this. We also have a bundle pack where you get uh, the lecture, you get uh, one of my online classes, and, and four uh, bonus lectures also. Okay, so we have the uh, we have the DVDs in also. It's a fantastic documentary. This with the African origins and the major religions. All right, now I want to go back to uh, this clip here of, of uh, Attorney Lennox Hines. Attorney Lennox Hines, uh, Sada Shakur's longtime attorney. Uh, this is from 2013 Democracy Now. Let's go back to this clip, please. During the shootout, came back and his story was conflicted and contradictory. And um, he originally claimed that he had seen her pull out a gun. Th th that's right, but there was no evidence to support that. As I said, um, uh, no fingerprints on any weapon. They claimed that she fired a weapon. There were no um, arsenic uh, powder marks or, or residue on her clothing or on her hands, etc. No forensic evidence. And he, he later also uh, admitted that the original reports and testimony that he had given was wrong. Was wrong. That's right. And yet she was still convicted. Yeah, she was convicted. Uh, and um, uh, it was an all-white jury. The pretrial publicity was such that people in Middlesex County and people from um, the northern part of New Jersey believed then and believe now that she is guilty. The mere fact that she was in the car meant that she was guilty. And in fact, the instructions to the jury, because there was no evidence of her doing any shooting, the instructions with the, to the jury was that if you find that she was present and supported the action of the people who did the shooting, she can be found guilty as a principal. And that is under the felony murder rule. Now, Angela Davis, I wanted to go to your own case years ago because it's okay. coming up with I'll, a new I'll film, right your own history. I'll I wanted to play right a trailer um, to the I'll new right documentary, there, Free Angela and All Political Prisoners. Stop the clip. Okay, thank you because we run out of time here. You can watch that on uh, Democracy Now's YouTube channel. We only have a few minutes left here in the show. You can watch that, uh, watch that full interview, uh, Democracy Now's YouTube channel. And also also there's a, an article from Democracy Now. Angela Davis and Asada Shakur's lawyer denounced FBI's adding, adding of exiled activists to terrorist lists. I'm gonna post the link here. That's also from Democracy Now as well. Okay, so uh we'll keep you updated on Santiago coley when he gets out i want to go to this last story here we're going to clip uh clip two dealing with uh florida shakita want to go to this story here uh cnn has this article uh we posted about it today you remember a couple of weeks ago we were talking about the protests that took place in the state legislature african-american uh members of the uh, florida state legislature protesting uh a uh, revising of the congressional map that Ron DeSantis signed off on, and it, it would uh, break up uh, District 5 and District 10, held by uh, Al, um, uh, Representative Al Lawson, I think it's Al Lawson, and also uh, Representative Val Demings, okay? Well, uh, a judge ruled today, uh, a DeSantis-appointed um, Florida Circuit judge uh, signals the Florida's congressional map is unconstitutional because it diminishes black representation. Let's go to this clip, please. In Tallahassee has put the state's new congressional map on hold, at least for now, ruling the map is likely unconstitutional. According to the judge, Governor DeSantis and the legislature were wrong to redraw the district that stretches from Jacksonville to Tallahassee and was designed to favor minority participation in Congress. The district is currently represented by Democrat Al Lawson. Kent, our political reporter, has been following this legal drama and is joining us now with more on the court's decision. Kent? 
Yeah, Tom, this is something. This is a portion of the map that we're talking about that state lawmakers approved in a special session last month. It was then signed into law by Governor DeSantis. Voting rights groups then went to court saying that this map, specifically kind of this yellow section here, uh, that it was taking away the ability of black voters in Northeast Florida to elect a candidate of their choice. Today, Leon County Circuit Judge Lane Smith granted a temporary injunction. So he says that the new map didn't follow the fair districts amendment that voters approved in Florida in 2010. The governor's office drew up the map after the governor vetoed another plan that lawmakers in the House and Senate had approved back in March. The governor's map revamped what had been known as District 5. So you're going to see that here in purple. It splits up across several districts. Uh, the state Supreme Court approved this map in 2015. And so Judge Smith, referring to that decision today, saying the map has been found to meet constitutional muster. And we got a statement from District 5 Congressman Al Lawson. Congressman Lawson said that he's pleased with today's ruling to overrule the governor's map and said it is critical to maintain Congressional District 5 so minority voters have a voice at the ballot box in November. I'm optimistic that future courts will also do what is right. The Secretary of State's office is expected to quickly appeal the decision to the first district court of appeals. That would lead to today's decision being put on hold. And then the timing, it's critical at all of this. Congressional candidates are making plans to run based on the map that the governor had signed. They must file their qualifying paperwork in mid-June. Tom and Mary. Thank you, Kent. If you would like to see how the map signed by the governor compares to the existing district map, check out this interactive on news 4 It is available to news 4 jacks insiders in the member update section on your okay, insider profile right there. page. And we'll pause also right let there. you look at the other. Okay, thank you. That's from news 4 jax out of uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, that is from uh, May 11, 2022. Uh, Wednesday, judge says he'll block Florida governor ron desantis redistricting plan that's on their youtube channel read this article here from cnn desantis appointed judge signals florida's congressional map is unconstitutional for diminishing black representation uh desantis office they're going to appeal this if uh, hopefully when it goes on the appeal and even if it goes to florida state supreme court hopefully they'll do the right thing and rule on behalf of uh, african americans because this is unconstitutional all right, you can support the African History Network, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, dollar sign the AHN show through Cash App, also through PayPal, paypal.me, register for online classes, also at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Remember, right now is correct wrong behavior. It's not over till we win. We'll count it forever. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace. All right, guys, we're out of here. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to uh, follow us on our social media platforms, The African History Network on Facebook. Turn on live notifications so you know when we go live. Follow me on YouTube, Michael M. Hotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P. Follow that live notifications. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a heart. Give us a like. Give us stars on Facebook. And uh, register for uh, my online classes as well. They're on sale $80, regularly $130. Next class is uh, Saturday, May 14th. And we do the sessions live. All the sessions are archived and recorded. You can go back and watch it anytime. So as soon as you register, you can watch uh, class number. Uh, you can watch the class we just did this past weekend. There's also bonus content is there as well. And even after the class is over with, you still can go back and watch the entire course. Okay. We do with thousands of years of history. What leads up to the transatlantic slave trade taking place? Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'af for understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach them in school. This class is Saturdays, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You don't have to be present in class. After we do the session live, the uh, the class is archived. If you've taken any of my online courses in the past, email me at ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com, ahnshow at africanhistorynetwork.com. You get a 50% discount, okay, on, on, on these classes and the bundle pack. We have a bundle pack of all three courses for $120. All right, we have to get out.